All right, welcome back to Classic DM. We're going to do another map drawing episode. This is actually during the day, but we're going to continue with room 11, 12, and 13 from the Glacial Rift of the Frost Giant Jarl. So you may remember the last episode. You should check it if you check it out. This is a challenging map to do. Uh, the reason why it's so challenging is it's just so large. It's larger than our actual play space. Let's get our drawing board lights going here, which are also our uh, battle map field area. And... Uh, Let's t what I've gone ahead and done ahead of time is you may remember the room before that we did, which is uh, over to the west side of this chamber. Um, I've zoomed in the map the upper right corner. There's room 11. This is the west side of it. So what I've gone ahead and done, this is the back face of it, is I've gone ahead and taped this down to my little $5 cheapo shower board <laughs> battle map with one-inch squares on it. And what we're going to do here is we're going to do this space we're going to do this area here, okay? So the problem we had before, not really a problem, is this entire room is huge. All the way from here to here is way bigger than this full length. And just to give you a sense of scale again, uh, for those of you who maybe forgotten or you just happen to catch this episode by itself, these are the size of typical WizKid style and uh, Reaper bone miniatures. Uh, these are the size tokens that we use. These are all one inch. So this, each one of these grids is a... Uh, Five, a one inch grid, which is five feet in the game, okay, in first edition especially. So let's figure out the room that we're going to draw, what part, because the theme is we're taking this entire room, this entire room here, and we're breaking up into these three major sections. This is the main entrance where players are progressing down that has this big wassail hall happening. We're going to do this east portion here. We'll do it pretty quickly, and then we'll move on in another episode and do the throne. This area here was the most complicated to do. Everything else connects to that. The thing that's really going to be the driving force here is this upper section and this section here. So the north and the east side is the most interesting part. Um, so we're going to focus on drawing around this way to this line here. Now if you look at the grid here, this is about 60 feet across. And this is like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, maybe 10 or 80 feet down. All right, so that's our basic layout. So what I've done already, just to save a little hassle here, is I've gone ahead and as you can see here on the edge a little bit I've traced over what's below and what that will do is give me a way to line the maps up because there may be situations in the game where I need to shift the maps this way or that way based on where people are in their line of sight. So we got our three basic markers here, our, our chisel point sharpie permanent marker, our uh, good old fashioned twin tip or extra fine fine ultra extra fine whatever you want to call it so we have another uh, stool here we need to do we're not going to do any detailing here now we do have the contour lines underneath so we want to start with this upper section and work our way around i've got the board showing more fun up here just to give you a sense of how things look give you a sense of how far away everything is with these kids we need to figure this out so you can follow along with the map you see where it says 14 on the map so we're gonna let this opening here, this is uh, this opening here, drive. We're gonna start working our way around here. So if we do everything right this way and go all the way down here, and we get to the bottom of this little area here, which is a shelf, we should be fine. Then we can cut over the stuff in between. Is not super exact science, but we can make it pretty accurate as well. So it looks to me like this is about a 10 foot opening, five foot opening between here, maybe a five foot opening between here. So just using the world's crappiest uh, one tenth of a cent pencil, okay? A number two pencil from Office Depot, if you ask for anything better. I've just laid this out really rough. So this is about a 10 foot wide opening over here. So this area has the stone going like this, and this is going to turn and go down. This goes down to area 15. So this needs to, to duck up like this, and then the rest of the map is going to kind of go down and jog down. So now that we've got this piece drawn here, let's just see how far away it is. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So let's just go, let's just say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So that means from about here, okay, this spot here is the corner of what we're going to draw, which means that's about right here. You see this? So with that being said, we've got maybe 10 to 20 feet coming in, 10, 20 feet of this upper cliff edge like this and then it just kind of spirals down and it extends almost all the way down to about this far away from this opening so we're going to just block this out roughly like that now because it's pencil and it probably doesn't read very well in the youtube video what i'm going to do i'm going to go ahead and boldly uh, use a chisel point flat tip and get the exterior perimeter walls 
blocked in. And once we have these done, notice how I'm having to turn my hand because of the different directions. Because the exterior walls, the the detailing on them doesn't really matter. In fact, I usually never draw this way. I'm not a violin player. But we're just going to go straight and jag over. Okay. So we've ducked down enough there. What we like to do, like we did on the other side, which you can actually fold this map over, is keep our line weights consistent. This is the back face. So we want to draw the same kind of sloping stuff here with the sloping lines going down. So let's do that next. And we can probably tuck this under. There we go. Without crushing the devil out of it. So we're going to use our uh, regular Sharpie. In fact, the old one, which is not a double tip one, it's just called Fine Point. The fine Point Sharpie is fantastic. So looking at the detail of this, we have uh, this sloping passage like this, sloping ramp. And this ramp kind of comes and bumps out. It kind of dips in. These little details don't, are like just whatever random details. They don't really affect the gameplay. But you want to get basically in large platform spaces and width. That's what really matters, how many people can get by the space, things like that. So it's kind of like that. There you go. So nothing too crazy about it. So as this thing is sloping upward, you know, you've got a frost giant up here, right? And you've got a player running up the hill. This is a slope up towards the camera like this, and then a plateau. If you want to look in the actual module itself, if you've got a copy of it, you can follow along with me. It says in the previous room description how tall those things were, and I've forgotten it off the top of my head. It's been about a week or so since we drew this. So this area is what? We're talking about 12 to 11. So you want to look at entry 11 on the second level. So entry 11, we've made notes here. Okay, so area A and B, each of these ledges hold watchful frost giant, armor, ballista, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't even say the height. It does say right here you go. A and B are 30 feet above the floor and hidden in dark shadow. That means they're not illuminated by anything. There's none of these uh, fire beetles and cages lighting things up. So 30 feet high. So if you're going to go this far to get up to 30 feet, it's almost like a handicapped accessible ramp in a way. But let's just, uh, let's just have the slope start about here, and then it'll get larger and larger as we go around because it's going to be mostly 30 feet around here. So let's go ahead and do that with our marquee, with our marquee, <laughs> with our sharpie here. All right, let's get this bad boy out of the way. So we're just going to have this kind of come around and hug the edge and get wider as we go further, and we're going to make it sure it's jaggedy, like that. Okay. And once again, for these types of sloping ramps, we like to use these organic slash lines, which kind of as if the cliff. You're looking down a cliff. It's not really a sheer cliff. If it was sheer, you wouldn't see anything. So we're just going to do that real fast. There's just simple little hash, hash marks. Try to use more of the tip as opposed to the side. If you start drawing on the side of the marker, you're, you're going to get you get finer lines this way than you will. I'm going to come over here and skip to some of these points. These are the ones that are really important. And all you're trying to do here is just give someone a sense that this is sloping and very sheer. So if you're playing gameplay, Let's get Varenjar out. I say Varenjar and Elephant Easy. Where is she at? Here she is. They want to climb walls. They could climb these walls. I mean, especially since it's rough hewn uh, stone. But if this frost, this giant was down here and they were up here, or if uh, you know Skira was up here casting illusion or something, this frost giant, he's 15 feet tall. It's another 15 feet above his head is how much elevation change there is for her. Okay, for him. So just gonna put some of these in, in here. Now remember, one thing I like to do is always try to triple all the lines up every now and then give them some more depth and bulk so it doesn't just look like you're doing cross hatching everywhere okay that's enough on that all right get these kids out of the way so that's that now let's do the slopes so the slopes i use the fine line i'm just going to drop this down and i'm actually going to pull away some of this uh pencil remember don't try erasing the pencil to your markers dry the good thing about sharpie you got 10 seconds it's done if you use a gel pen or something, you're going to be like, oh my goodness, I just smeared ink everywhere. The fun of traditional media. If you're using Photoshop, you don't have this problem. I have nothing against digital drawing. I loved using Sketchbook Pro. But this for this show, 40 years later, you got to do it the old school way. Plus, it's fun to draw again. You get more junk all over you. See, you've already got a wound right there. All right, here we go. So these slopes, what we like to do is slope them kind of towards you as if it's a nice gradual sloping curvature and have some of the lines closer together. It's just representing the slope and eventually it's going to get to a part where it, the slope lines are less and less frequent and this is a plateau. We can actually put a little slope around here and this is going down to like this. So when they're close together it's sharper and steeper. Steep, flat, steep, maybe another line through here. There we go. And this is like that. All right, cool. So that's that part. 
easy enough. Now, we want to make sure that we haven't lost any detail on the opening where 14 is. So we've got this rock here that's making a branching passageway to either side. We get some of this uh, graphite off of here too. No one's knocking at the door. Nasty storms here today. Okay. But it looks okay to me. Alright. So we've got this here, got this here, got this here. We could do back faces, but I don't want to do that yet. We also have some topography lines that are kind of com coming across. We could do that now, but I want to put furniture down first and do topography under it. So we're going to do furniture last. Alright. Let's figure out where this bad boy is. So this looks like it's 20 feet off of this one. So 10, 20. So somewhere here. And how far in from this one? Twi maybe 10, 20 in from here. So that's that side. And it kind of dips down like this. But it's not as deep as that. So just roughly. That's a pillar. So it's not a stalagmite coming up. Let's add a stalagmite for interest in here as well. They have a little speck here. I'm going to kill the speck. And I'm going to make it a uh, stalagmite, which is a series of concentric rings. So we're going to do that real quick. Let's draw those. So in this situation, it's another bold line, bold floor to ceiling pillar like this. And we'll use our regular Sharpie here to do the stalagmite. The stalagmite's going to be kind of jagged, little jags here like this. And when we did it before, you can see this is it here. We did a series of circles like that as if it was all uh, wound together. In this situation, we're going to do the circles on the interior of it. So we're just going to fold this over like this. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to go like this. We're going to tip this in as if there was a whole bunch of them, not just three. And then we're going to get... You're almost drawing like a four-leaf clover inside of a four-leaf clover. What you're trying to represent here is almost like a sandcastle. And you want this stuff to get in really close. And do one more, maybe a little bit further in like this. So this is supposed to represent like stone that comes up maybe 30 feet in the air because the cavern top of this place is pretty big. So this is solid viscous floor to ceiling. It could taper and get big again, whatever. We're not sure. Um, what else can we do? So we got this, got this, got this, got this worked out over here. Now we can do some furniture layout. This will be fun. So you may remember in the original description, let's pull that up again real quick. There is a, this room is empty in the original module, which we decided to not do that. We decided in the original module, here's what it says. The, uh, Great Cavern of the Great Jarl. I'm not going to pull it up on the right. You can just follow along with your own copy. Uh, this is where the special functions of feasts take place. Various tables and benches now line the east and west walls, pushed out of the way until a time of need. Caged fire beetles dimly illuminate the place and appears to be completely deserted in a guard at post A and B. And this is, that means the little sloping thing. So we decided to not do that in the spirit of Christmas. We decided to make this Hey, this is, a, this is a celebration in full swing. Now, why do we do that? Because of our storyline. If you remember our storyline from the very beginning of this entire campaign, the royal child between that's the offspring of um, Mara and Aiden, which binds the tiger nomads together with the kingdom of Ket, the child was abducted by drow with hill giant lackeys, is being moved through all the giant facilities somewhere. So that's if that's moved on and if they've moved past here, uh, going down towards Eclavdra and her friends in the Vault of the Drow, there'd be a huge celebration, big payoff. Um, other visitors have come into the area. I know as a DM what's going on in the, in the dungeon. So what I want to have happen here instead is a huge, massive, fun celebration, I like the Great Hall and the Steading the Hill Giant Chief. So think about the flow. This is an arch little architectural thing here. So this area here goes up to Area 14. So take a look and think about what is in area 14 before you draw the connection this is a kitchen cave complex so there's a bunch of fire giantesses and people cooking and stuff now if you look at area 15 15 is a weapons cave so think about how often that would be used if you're having a huge wassail type party kitchen orcs and goblins and orc or whatever ogres are coming here delivering food to people you probably have a seating area niched in here so we'll put what we're going to do is we're going to put a big table kind of like at an angle like this We'll put this table like this, make a big, long table, and we'll have some stools sitting here, very Viking style. And we're going to put, there's a big table here, we're going to put a round table about right here. We're just going to put, we'll put four stools on that. So the kitchen staff kind of filter through here, maybe move around here. 
what could we put here? We'll put torches over there. They're coming down this way. There was no tables over here. This is a great place for a big table here. I'm going to put a standard uh, rectilinear table. It's a long 10 foot, 5, 10, 15, 20 foot by 10 foot wide. It's a huge table, way bigger than a pool table. And we're going to keep the stool theme going, okay? We're not going to do any bench seats like from Pottery Barn or World Market or anything. So there's a big table we'll put there. We would have some illumination through here. Let's do one of these uh, fire beetle lanterns. Let's put one of those kind of like right here in the middle, okay? So the design for that we did previously is basically a diamond shape like this. And then we have a circle on the inside. And then we have a cage. Let me draw one of those right now because I know this stuff in pencil this probably doesn't read very well for you yet. So you just have a diamond shape like this. And then we had just a concentric circle on the inside like this. And then in a lighter line weight, we used another circle inside of that. And then we just went to the four corners. It's like something you would see in like Mr. Ribbon. And we can actually, then we just do another line here like this. And then you, the second layer can have another one. It's like something you'd see in Ribbon. So one of those are there. Let's think about this table here. Let's jump over here to the side and do this table. I'm going to make it a little smaller than I've drawn it in pencil so it's not quite so big. And I'm just going to put stools underneath, tucked underneath here. This stool. Let's put this stool over here a little more, more comfortable. And let's do this table here. This table is pretty jammed up against the side of this cliff edge. Someone couldn't walk around the table. That's kind of bad. Um, I think I'm going to revise that design and change the angle. Now, I originally thought it would be kind of nice to have a flow going around this way, but I think what we're going to do is we're going to make this rectilinear, meaning that it's going to be like this. Let's do that real quick, because if it's too too much of an angle and too organic, so we have a 10-foot table. Let's put it half across here. Let's put this big, long table across here, and then we'll just do the benches. All right, great. So let's go down here. Let's just swoosh this over here. We'll put a big stools. These can be moved in and out. Someone wants to sit with their back to the... Uh, Let's put some of these stools underneath here. There we go. They're getting bigger. <laughs> that one's kind of small. The uh, No big deal. So this, this area here would not really a space. Some people might walk through here or walk around the stalagmite to get up out of your stool and go over here. I think I'll put a fire beetle thing right over here. So let's put one of these bad boys right at the base here. Concentric circle. And then we'll do a center circle maybe halfway this time cardinal points and let's do another circle like this and just do some other lines like that all right now we had a space here I'm gonna offset this by five from the grid let's just put a couple stools and some of these are tucked under I'm gonna put one right here this is a big hall lots of fun and partying going on Enough room for uh, everybody and all the visitors. One thing I like to do in the in the steading, what I did is I added a table for the scrubs. <laughs> As you go further this way south, if you look on the map, area 12 is the throne. That's where all the fanciful tables are. So this might be a good idea. Let's add some temporary table over here near the opening to the weapons room. So if you were, uh, a, let's, say, let's say you're a bunch of bugbears. Right? We got some book say you're a bunch of bugbears, you gotta sit at a table by yourself, no nowhere near your friends. You don't need this huge ten foot diameter table. This will be a five foot diameter table. Let's make this about this big here. Okay? So this will be about a I don't know, what do you think? S seven foot diameter table? That's pretty big. Even in, if you're gonna try to buy one now today, you'd have trouble with it. These stools will be smaller in diameter. You can cram five bugbears sitting here. Bugbears aren't midgets, but they're not as big. So you could have these five bugbears sitting at this table like this, drinking beer or whatever, getting in trouble. Let's pull this over. This would be a great place for like set stuff down table. If you're bringing in food, keep the flagons of beer, whatever you need to do to serve people. We're not doing restaurant design 101, but this would be a good place to have uh, maybe flagons or pitchers that have beer in it, maybe some plates of food, some cabinets below. So we're just going to throw that down there. We're going to... We're going to kind of erase as we go these excess pencil marks. Let's get this off of here. Okay. And clean this up since we redesigned this on the fly. 
So these really big, huge, massive, 20 foot long tables. Imagine those things totally decorated out. And they wouldn't have Christmas decorations on them, but imagine them totally um, covered with food and everything. Huge, massive pieces of s pigs in the spit. So since this, uh, this dungeon, this adventure has a kitchen, you know they had a kitchen in the steading, a hill giant chief in the steading, they actually had a huge pit where stuff was on a rotisserie cooking. We don't have that happening here. So let's, uh, let now we can do our topography lines. Let's do them. That we got most of the basic furniture here. We do have some room to put something here. I think I'm going to do for variety. I think what I'm going to do here, we're going to do a table the other direction. So let's give a room for people to walk around this. And we'll put a big table here. Another 10 by 1, 2, 3, another 20 foot by 10 foot wide table over here. So I'm just going to pull this down. Another big table. And then big stools. One at each end. Make this one, make these more organic. That one's really bad. And then a big table there. Okay, that should work pretty good. Okay, now that we got most of the junk down, now let's do our topography line. So, what you want to do is take the line from before, and just match it, and then continue it. So what we want to do is have furniture sitting on flat surfaces, not furniture sitting on massively sloping surfaces. So this is going to slope around like this. Have this one come around this way. I'm actually going to have this slope around like this. This is just going to tuck under the table. And I'm going to have it come around over to here. So what this means is the lines, as they move left to right, are representing a slope. So as you move through towards the throne room, things are rising. Okay, now we're going to have this slope cut across here. So this table here rickets and bops back and forth, right? And we're going to pull this all the way around. And we're going to have this one just skirt the edge of this and create a slope here. And now we're going to reverse the slope into this room. And we get this a little more dramatic like that. This gives us a sense of it's really sloping in. So this is a ramp up. This is a kitchen. I'm going to make it slope down. So I'm going to start with this and start sloping the other way. So think of the letter C. The letter C is like this, right? If it's, if you're laying things on top of each other, let's do it this way. Use a piece of paper. Okay. So here's one plane. Excuse me. So here's one plane, like this, and here's the next plane, and then here's the next plane. Each one of these is stair-stepping up, right? The next one like this, and the next one like that. So you want the curves on this side, right? So you want the curves happening like this. So the inside part of the C is the toward is sloping up. So this is where we have a transition where things are s s sloping down and it's sloping back up again. So this is kind of the valley right through here. Now if you were a civil engineer, you'd be worried about that. So what I'm going to do is I'll make this kitchen slope down. I'll make it slope down relatively rapidly. So when people come out of the kitchen, you have to see them kind of walking up the slope of the cavern. And this here is going to go up. All right. Another thing we like to keep track of is additional torches. I like to put these on stone walls and stuff like that. What we've been doing so far is just mounting torches every time. It's okay if there's a lot of them. Uh, whoops on these surfaces here where it makes sense. If you were in this room and the only source of light you have was torches on sconces, you would put those there. This is supposed to be dark. I'm going to put a sconce up here, but it's not going to be illuminated. This is a great, little places like this. These are great places for little torches because they're like, as you come into the passageway, you can see in. The kitchen would have some too. And what we're going to do with this kitchen, we're going to do something we did in one of the other rooms. I'm not going to pull the map out because too 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 much of a hassle, but I'm actually going to put like this curtain type of a thing like this. And if it's been drawn back, you may not be able to see that. No, you can see it. Let's just put a little frame here. So if this is a curtain that will be drawn back, and I'm going to put a little dash line over it. Say there's a little wooden frame that's kind of curve. There we go. So the curtain, they can close and open and close the kitchen. All right. So what we got going on here? Stalagmites. Now we detailed the stalagmites before. We uh, like to put lots of stippling and stuff everywhere. So let's go ahead and unattach this and remove the map below 
and then we'll do some quick detailing on what we've done with this map. And now that I can untape this one, you'll be able to see how they match up a little bit better, right? Untape this too. If you're taking tape off, take the tape off away from the edge. If you pull it from the edge, you're going to tear it. Not that it matters too much. You can always reuse this stuff too. So just to give you an idea, here's the other map, right? So we're going to take this to the same level of detail. This is on the other side. The camera won't even cover it all. So what you have happening is, say the players were fighting, and you only need to have part of the map on the scene. So you had the Druid here, and here was the here was Mercedes. And they were gonna get they were gonna confront these two jokers here. So say you had a frost giant. This gives you a sense of the room for them to move around. So they're not gonna really be able to, she could be over here, she could be up in the front lines holding this. So the furniture really helps create this dynamic filtering. They can always push the tables out of the way too, which is really exciting. So this allows us to move and shift the map this way and that way based on what's happening, but we've already got it pre-drawn. So it's like scrolling. Imagine making the if it's a digital map, you would just scroll it. Alright. So let's go to the, let's do the back faces now, and then we'll add more detail to the furniture. We'll be done. I'm just gonna put this back down here. Okay. Back faces is simple. You just basically inset one chisel point depth, and you do it on the inside, not on the out, not on the outside, and on the inside. So we can just turn the map around however we want to. In fact, I'm just gonna put this on top of this. You can see the fire happen live. And let me move this over. We'll put this here. It's been covering everything up the whole time, but whatever. Great. All right. So where were we? Back face. Chicken scratching. Do the same thing for this. The reason why I like to do it on the back face, you could do it on the front face. It, it's kind of a funny thing. We should do architectural drawings manually in the 80s and early 90s, and we do lots of uh, back face stuff on mylar and vellum sketch paper and stuff. The reason why we would do that is to, so when you would put it through a blueprint machine, it would read a different depth or level of translucency. This chisel point's dying. Good thing I got five more in a box over there for a dollar. Um, so, you know, the the thickness of the blackness, how translucent it is, kind of helps imply something else besides just a good old solid huge mega black line. I mean, you could put some kind of a shipping marker here and just make it all a big swash of black, but I think doing it this way gives it a little artistry that's a little nice, that's nicer. So, one thing we like to do you use this as reference for consistency. So see how we're doing this lawnmower uh, effect on the floor to ceiling columns? Let's do that. That's for this. In fact, I may get on the, I'm going to keep this the same direction. I'm going to do this left to right. This is the easy direction for me to do it personally. I don't care if I get, don't get too close. I'll fill that in later. So it's like mowing a lawn. One line barely overlapping the next. So there's a little bit of gap around the edges. You can just take your chisel point and just fill that in a little bit because you're on top of another black line that's above. That should dry within seconds. And we have another one over here. Let's do the same thing with this. This big light's really gross. So once again, I'm just doing what's comfortable for me, which is away from me. That's right-handed. Just whatever's comfortable. I'm more interested in trying to focus on not the, the overlap than I am on a... I need to get another camera from this angle so you can see things better. Good. I'll turn that off that way. You don't have so much glare. All right. So what else do we have for back facing? Those are all done. This should be dry in a second. Just touch it. Make sure it's okay. It's almost dry. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and flip this. And I'm just going to reuse my pieces of tape here. and tape some of this back down. And we'll be done with this pretty soon. Let's go tape this over here. There we 
There we go. Okay. We'll keep the other map on hand. So the big tables, let's do big tables. Plates, big long boards, individual slopes, individual little lines on the, uh, so I do a lot of fine lining, okay? So let's just do this this way. So we have a big long, uh, big long table like this. Do plates. Just really quick little plates here. Bunch of mugs. Do some plates over here. Plate for you. Huge feast, right? Just to kind of allude to the fact that the plates have an inset. So a lot of times one thing I like to do is just, once you start drawing one thing, just draw it everywhere because your muscle memory will remember what it is you're drawing. So I'm just drawing a circle, and in the interior circle part, I'm just drawing part of another circle to imply a plate, because it's not really a gameplay thing. Put a plate here. These giants are like, oh my goodness, I can't put much on my plate. Plates, plates, plates. Beer mugs. Just a circle with a little bump on the end. The more rectilinear the better, but whatever. Not everyone's right handed, it's just an instinct. And put a big picture in the middle here. Now we can do the little the boards holding the table together. You can also see me doing a little dash dash dash. Just faster that way, as opposed to trying to uh, make it perfect. You're just implying something. You're not really trying to uh, make the lines perfectly li line up. That's a little off center. It's just enough detail for you to believe it. That's wood, 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 wood. Okay, great. Let's do this big table this way. Like it's a big spool of wire you see from a power line company. Put a bold line on the ends. Do the same thing for this one, but a different direction. Whatever feels comfortable. I'm just going to do it from this uh, above and down towards me. That way I can do the motion like this with my hand. It's like playing the guitar if you knew what you are doing, right? Now, one thing we did before... We need consistency in the same room. We need these little quick little dirty uh, hash marks for all these stools everywhere. So these are smaller stools for bugbear size guys. This is uh, bigger stuff for uh, the players. So give you a sense of scale here. Okay. So let's just do these close together. put four in each one of these. By the direction of the wood grain you're also kind of dictating which way the stool is facing. Another trick you can do is when you're doing these repetitive motions like this you get a rhythm going. So watch this. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a vertical one, right? So here's a vertical one. One, two, three, four. I'm going to jump over here and do another vertical one real quick because the same actual motion. My hands are already in the right position for it. Like that. Now if I want to do something that go this way, whoops, I can just grab another one. To keep it organic, just don't do it all in the same spot. It helps you do it really, really fast that way. Especially when it's near something else that's turned the other way. So then we're going to do something that's maybe down this way. Move these kids out of the way here. How about like this? 
jump down to here. What else do we have? Anyone else missing? How about this one? This one should work too. Do this one down here. Okay, all the stools are done. Here's one need something on it. Okay, that's done. Okay, we can do we could do stippling next. Plates done. That's done. That's done. Drop shadows. We'll do them last. Let's do some jibble bits <laughs> for debris and stone. Let me remind you what that looks like. So see these little dots here. So we're trying to imply some dirtiness around the edges of the slopes of the stalagmites. Not around the tables and chairs. This furniture we moved and shuffled around. So we're going to do some of that. And remember, you just do star galaxy pattern where you start far away. Like this is a good place for it. So let's actually put a couple of cr uh, undetectable squiggles and junk around the edges of this to keep this stuff feeling softer. It's just whatever. Just very jagged. Doesn't mean anything. Do some up here too. Just to give it a sense of like what is this dirt and mildew? Who knows? Some of the stone here can do the same thing. And then we're going to uh, we're going to go out go out like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I'm just getting really close. And we're going to bend this around the corner here. And this is a good place. It's like a galaxy getting scatter shot from a shotgun. It's closer and closer as you get to the edges. So you go to watch how I'm going to get close to this edge. I'm going to get closer. And then when you get close, it's over cape, they overlap. Then they'll create a little bit more tone that way. You can also go around the edges as well. We are going to go around the edges of some of these slopes. Especially where we have little curves like this for like dirt and junk collects. It's not really beautiful. It's just supposed to give you a sense. If you want to do something beautiful, you should be doing this for 14 hours. We're doing this in 40 minutes. Players will appreciate having a sense of what it is. And there's a bunch of junk here. Almost too much random dots happening here. Let's get some real nastiness happening here. We really want to anchor this because we're getting a little too uh, consistent. It's too many dots are happening all over the place. It's getting noisy. So that being the case, don't be afraid to pull out a bigger chisel tip line weight and do something nastier. Another trick you can do is take where these things come together and just create a little line where they connect. There's not cracks, but they're just a uh, implying some kind of overlap. And once we put these back faces on here, it won't be, it won't be so bad. Okay, that's enough of that. Okay, how are we looking on time? 38 minutes, not bad. Two more minutes to get done. So, refer to your previous map. Keep your drop shadows kind of the same way, but consider the light source. Remember that this is a light source. This is a light source. So, all you need to do is think about local light sources. So, we don't have a local light source down here. Let's add one real quick. Let's get our Sharpie out again. Let's put one of these right here. One of these fire beetle things. And then you get the font smaller line weight. Kind of ran into a little Magneto car from Riven. Great game. Let's put another one over here. Need another one about right here. How's our storm looking? The same. A big storm here today. Fallout Infinite. Okay. I buy shotgun, but I mean, so light coming this way. Let's get some uh, drop shadow action happening around there. 
little bold, but whatever. We'll tone that down. Shadow's going this way. Oh, that's one chair with no detail on it. Keep that close at hand. Coming this way. Light going this way, shadow on the other side. Light coming on this side. Move to this one down here just for fun. Torches with blast light this way. Ah, wrong side on that one, but it doesn't matter. No one's going to know. Trying to go too fast. Something is better than nothing. We also did the tables with really bold ones. Kind of help anchor them to the ground. I'm just going to do this as a trick we used to do in architecture. Just everything vertical gets a thick, thick chisel line. Everything horizontal gets a thin one. So just turn that chisel point at an angle like this. And we just put this here like this. Okay, I think we're done. This is area 11, east side. Just be sure right what we want on the side of it here. So say 11 east. There you go, there you have it. That wasn't too bad. Didn't take too long. 40 minutes. Trying to get him faster. We should, if I ever get fast, we'll call it fast map show. I'm still too slow. <laughs> I get bogged down with the details. Now, now you got this map, and if you're playing, you can actually tape these together. I think at some point I'm going to get a couple more cameras and we we'll have multiple camera angles. That'll be really fun. So here's how this room works. This huge room, the over connection is like this. You could actually tape these two together and have this one huge beastly map. If you're at a big gaming table and you weren't trying to do it with a camera, the only reason we're doing this this way is because we're on a camera. You have this huge big map like that. It's awesome. Look how big it goes all the way across over here huge room. That's how big it is in the module. That's how big we're doing it here. Hope you had fun. Once again, uh, check out the Patreon page for uh, information and updates. And we're going to go weather the storm. Have a great weekend.